Virus fears continue as cases go up despite vaccinations. From Tokyo and the Olympics to England, some countries are upping restrictions and protests are breaking out. President Biden caused some heated debate when he claimed at a town hall that vaccinated people cannot get the virus. This comes as CDC data shows over 5,000 fully vaccinated people have been hospitalized due to the virus. And House Democrats voted down a bill that would require the U.S. Director of National Intelligence to declassify information and data related to the origins of the pandemic. Tune into Deep Dive as we explore these topics and more. Hello and welcome. This is Deep Dive and I'm Tiffany Meyer. The Summer Olympics are on. After being pushed back a year amid the pandemic, the 2021 Summer Olympics opened in Tokyo today with no spectators. As Japan is under a state of emergency due to a surge in virus cases. And they kicked off with a bang. 1,800 drones took to the skies. This comes as fears of virus spread continue. Even before the Games started, over 70 virus cases linked to officials and athletes at the Games. Some stars seeing their dreams dashed before the Games even began. A small but growing number of athletes are testing positive even inside the Olympic Village. Some are raising fears the Olympics could become a super spreader event. And while many cheer on the hopefuls going for gold, let's take a moment to look at pandemic restrictions around the world. Saudi Arabia announced possibly the strictest virus-related restrictions in the world. Unvaccinated people are banned from nearly all public places. Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Municipal and Rural Affairs announced this week that starting August 1st, unvaccinated people cannot enter malls, shopping areas, markets and retail stores. Individuals will also have to show proof of vaccination to be allowed into restaurants, weddings, parties, cafes, barbershops, salons, and other establishments. And workers and visitors who work in a number of municipal establishments are required to be vaccinated. And Saudi citizens wanting to travel outside the country will have to take two doses of the vaccine before leaving. France is also upping the pressure. Restaurants, cafes, movie theaters, shopping centers and more in France may have to start checking for vaccine passports by next month. If the business owners and managers don't comply, they could get fined up to $53,000 and sentenced up to one year in prison. The passport proves you've been fully vaccinated, are immune or have tested negative in the last 48 hours. As for customers who don't have a vaccine passport, they can be fined over $12,000 and face up to half a year in prison. Thousands of French residents protested the government's demand for vaccine passports over the weekend. By mid-September, if healthcare workers are not vaccinated, they can get fired from work. And Italy is following in the footsteps of France in an effort to slow the spread of the virus. Starting in August, residents will need a green pass, showing proof of vaccination or a negative virus test to gain access to gyms, movie theaters and more. A similar rollout in France generated significant controversy. Both countries have been seeing protests to the news. And despite vaccinations, virus cases continue to appear around the world. In England, mandatory mask wearing is gone. We don't do it now. We've got to ask ourselves, when will we ever do it? So this is the right moment. The Prime Minister lifting almost all of the COVID-19 restrictions amid a rise in cases driven by the spread of the Delta variant. As to the U.S., the American Academy of Pediatrics releasing new guidance for schools that supports in-person learning and, among other things, recommends universal masking in school for everyone over the age of two. During a televised CNN town hall in Cincinnati, Ohio, Wednesday night, Biden said the CDC is going to say that what we should do is everyone under the age of 12 should probably be wearing a mask in school. That's probably, That's what's, probably going what's going to happen. Secondly, those over the age of 12 who are able to get vaccinated, if you're vaccinated, you shouldn't wear a mask. If you aren't vaccinated, you should be wearing a mask. Current CDC mask guideline recommends that masks should be worn indoors by all individuals who are two and older who are not fully vaccinated. Children under the age of 12 aren't currently eligible for vaccines. Both Moderna and Pfizer started trials of their vaccines for children under 12 in March. The results are expected in the fall. Biden said that vaccines for children under 12 would get approved soon. 
And Biden caused some heated debate when he claimed at a town hall that vaccinated people cannot get the virus. At that same town hall, Biden said, we have a pandemic for those who haven't gotten the vaccination. It's that basic, that simple. He went on to say, you are not going to get COVID if you have these vaccinations. If you are vaccinated, you are not going to be hospitalized. You're not going to be in the IC unit and you're not going to die. Biden did say it may be possible, adding, I know of none where they're hospitalized in ICU or have passed away. So at a minimum, I can say even if they did contract it, which I'm sorry they did, it's such a tiny percentage and it's not life-threatening. Now, according to data released by the CDC, over 5,000 fully vaccinated people have been hospitalized due to the virus. That's as of July 12th. The data also notes over 1,000 fully vaccinated people have contracted the virus and died from it. That's nearly 20% among those hospitalized. But health officials say the reporting is voluntary and the number is likely an undercount. In a May 1st update, the CDC said health officials have transitioned from monitoring all reported vaccine breakthrough cases to focus on identifying and investigating only hospitalized or fatal cases due to any cause. The CDC states on its website, vaccine breakthrough cases are expected. No vaccines are 100% effective at preventing illness. Breakthrough cases are virus cases that appear among fully vaccinated people. Deaths among the population are known as breakthrough deaths. Israeli officials said in late June that during a recent outbreak of the virus, about half of the adults infected in the recent outbreak were fully vaccinated. And some interesting figures. The number of deaths following vaccination spiked last Friday on the CDC website, nearly doubling from a little over 6,000 to over 12,000. But the CDC announced it was an error and revised it to under 6,000. Now, let's take a quick moment to look at breakthrough cases around the states. Since December 2020, New Jersey has had 49 breakthrough deaths among fully vaccinated residents. Illinois announced 151 last week. Louisiana announced 27 earlier this month. And Massachusetts announced 80 this week. And now the nonprofit America's Frontline Doctors filed a motion on July 19th seeking immediate injunctive relief to stop the emergency use authorization of the COVID-19 vaccines for three groups of Americans. Those groups are anyone under the age of 18, anyone who has recovered from COVID-19, and those who haven't given informed consent as defined by federal law. It's a federal lawsuit filed in the U.S. District Court in the Northern District of Alabama. They are arguing, quote, the emergency declaration and its multiple renewals are illegal. They say the legal requirements to issue and maintain COVID-19 vaccine EUAs aren't being met, writing there's no underlying emergency and no serious or life-threatening disease or condition. According to HHS's data, COVID-19 has an overall survivability rate of 99.8% globally. That's on par with the seasonal flu. They also say VAERS is inaccurate and that the federal government is failing to provide data from other sources, such as the military, Medicare and Medicaid. And Jane Doe, a computer programmer with expertise in the healthcare data analytics field, filed a sworn statement indicating that the actual number of deaths following vaccination is about 45,000. She states, it is my professional estimate that VAERS database, while extremely useful, is underreported by a conservative factor of at least five. She goes on to say, I queried data from CMS medical claims with regard to vaccines and patient deaths and have assessed that the deaths occurring within three days of vaccination are higher than those reported in VAERS by a factor of at least five. This would indicate the true number of vaccine-related deaths was at least 45,000. Jane Doe noted that the swine flu vaccine was taken off the market because of 53 deaths reported following vaccination. And as to where the virus came from, House Democrats voted down a bill on Tuesday that would require the U.S. Director of National Intelligence to declassify information and data related to the origins of the pandemic, specifically targeting the role of the Wuhan lab. The House vote came in at 216 against and 207 in favor. In May, the COVID-19 Origin Act was passed unanimously in the Senate. According to the text of the bill, identifying the origins of the virus is crucial in preventing a similar pandemic in the future from occurring. 
The bill also noted that the Director General of the WHO even acknowledged in March that more investigation into the theory the virus leaked from the lab in Wuhan, China, is warranted. And on Thursday, China rejected a plan from the WHO to carry out a second phase of investigations into the origins of the CCP virus or coronavirus. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki called the CCP's position, quote, irresponsible and frankly dangerous. It's not just the United States calling for this as a part of our renewed engagement and our efforts to uh, build a coalition of support around the world uh, with allies and partners. We're joined by the international community on this, uh, partners and multilateral organizations who are also calling for and pressuring China to be uh, engaged in the, state, the second phase of this discussion. Saki reiterated the importance of a transparent and independent analysis after China failed to provide necessary data and access in the WHO's Phase 1 investigations. Earlier on Thursday, China's Vice Minister of the National Health Commission stated that he was taken aback by the hypothesis in the Phase 2 plan that the virus may have leaked from a Chinese lab. He used the WHO to turn its origin tracing efforts to other countries instead. But what do you think? Let me know below. Thanks for tuning in to Deep Dive. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and have a wonderful weekend.